But I'm very curious how you two became collaborators um, and why you chose this particular show. Well, I can, I can start yeah, on that. You can well, start I, on that. I, um, the, you know, Prometheus Bound came from me. I, um, I've been immersed in Greek culture for years and Greek literature. I read ancient Greek. And um, I think it's in the midst of the war in Iraq, which I thought was such a terrible and unjust war. And um, it brought up to me this play, and the heart of this play, which is that, to me, that you know, just because you call a crime just, doesn't make it just, it's still a crime. Yeah. And I began, tra the play felt urgent to me. Yeah. At a time when I felt surrounded by a kind of feeling of hopelessness and voicelessness in the culture. Yeah. And so I began working on this play and translating the play from the Greek and trying to sort of remake American English into the form of Greek to give the words that kind of power, and almost the feeling of blood being turned into words that you get in the, in the original play. And when I had finished the translation, um, and from the beginning, I imagined this as a piece that would have incredible music and dance and spectacle and so on. I, I called my friend Diane Paulus, mm -hmm. who was the director. This is before she ran this theater. Okay. And um, she read the translation and really loved the translation and was very excited about it. And she and I share a fascination with how ancient Greek tragedies were once done and how much they engaged the entire body politic and they were really transformative and ecstatic experiences. Mm -hmm. And um, she said, I really hear music in this play. She said, your translation, in fact, it's so literal, but it feels so rock and roll to me. Mm. And I said, I agree. I really think that rock and roll is the language of our culture, and it has within it this cry of rebellion. I said to Serge the other day, it's like rock music has within it this sort of cry against the deaf heavens, which seems so mm. pertinent to this play. And our, you know, our top um, composer, our top musician that we talked about, both Diane and I, was Serge. Mm. Neither of us knew him. Um, it turned out, I called my music publisher to talk to him about it, and it turned out that he was actually not only represented Serge, but was a friend of Serge's. Mm. And so he arranged a lunch for us. We met for lunch at this amazing vegan restaurant in LA called uh, Real Food Daily. And we are we plugging Real Food Daily? No, here but right last now? night last night I was talking about this vegan restaurant. Two people in the crowd came up to me and said, "Why are you talking about Real Food Daily?" But anyway, so we met for this lunch, and uh, I think we just had a real meeting of the minds. There was a real feeling of solidarity, just as friends and yeah. people who shared a certain politics and aesthetic view. And Serge didn't know the play. I told him the story of the play, and he was just captivated as I told him, which I could feel. And then um, shortly after that, I sent him my translation of the play. And then Serge, I just pulled it up last night. I, have the, I still have the email Serge oh, sent cool. me, mm. where he, um, he responded so powerfully to the play that he actually listed in his email to me you know, quotes from the text that had really hit him hard and felt like truths. Right. So that's how we began. And I mean, I can talk a lot about the journey since, but you may want to get from Serge. But, um, it's been a pretty extraordinary journey ever since then. That was like three and a half years ago. Yeah, has it been that long? Well, I think so. I should check the date right. on this email. I think it's December 2008. I heard when it first got workshopped. So, yeah, we started. Oh, well, we started before that, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 yeah, because we had been working on it for a while before we workshopped. Because we had to have something to workshop. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> songs. And we actually, I had a bunch of stuff the first time we were going to workshop. We had a bunch of songs. All oh, yeah, we, were, we had a lot. We had a full version of the show. So, so on your end, then, what's what's the, what's the, what's the Serge's side of the story? Um, it's pretty much as he said it. You know, we we met up uh, for a meal and and talked about politics, talked about music, talked about uh, what's going on in the world, and and he kind of started talking to me about Prometheus, and it sounded really intriguing. I I really enjoyed, uh, you know, kind of throwing ideas around. I mean, Stephen's not just amazing with words, but he's amazing with philosophy. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's I enjoyed that. Like we were, we were theorizing upon stuff, and just had this really awesome conversation. He gave me the script. I went back, read it. I'm like, wow, this is really powerful. You know, I've been dealing with the idea of civilization and its, you know, kind of climax, if you will, and uh, at the same time, you know, tyranny and injustice and all of the work that I've done in activism. And here we are presented with uh, a situation at the beginning of, of early Greek democracy where a civil
Lucilius felt the need to warn us about tyranny, even through the door of democracy. Right. And here we are dealing with tyrannies. Uh, so it was such a relevant story. It was so powerful and resonating as far as the truths that were inherent in the, in the script that it really uh, uh, inspired me. And I'm like, wow, I never thought about really doing a musical. But this, this is one that I, if, if I ever did one, this mm -hmm. would be the one. Mm -hmm. And so like it, it really kind of excitement built up inside me. So we started communicating. And the first song that we actually did together wasn't even one we intended to do for the musical. As soon as we became friends, mm -hmm. he just sent me a lyric. He, he's like, you know, I just thought of you after our conversation, a lot of the stuff that I was doing, and I came up with this. I'm not sure what it means. I'm not even sure this is for the musical, but here you go, kind of thing. And I took it, and I was, you know, uh, working on, on a bunch. I, I work on a, a lot of different types of songs all at the same time. You know, like I do a lot of music, not for specific projects. You know, I just write all the time. So there was this one piece that it just, like, fit into and I'm like wow I should send him I should demo his lyrics over this song and this this music and send it to him and see what he thinks and I sent it to him and he was like wow dude what is that like it's amazing and that was the hunger the first song, song that was just released with Shirley the Manson covering it oh, okay yeah, it was just released on iTunes two days ago yeah it's and, and now it's a, and now a, it's a, part a of focal the piece of the yeah. show yeah so it just kind of came in fact the together. direction that it came that took the song took informed some, in some sense decisions about the direction of the show. Interesting. I, I, I mean, I tell you what I mean. If you're you're looking at me like, no, 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 no. Uh, yeah. Well, the um, I think that when I began and when I first called Serge and when Diane and I were talking about when we were talking, I wasn't I wasn't necessarily setting out to create a musical. I wanted to, you know, I've done that. You know what I mean? And I, I yeah. did that with Spring Awakening, and I was very clear from the beginning that's what I was doing with this. I wanted to create this Greek tragic experience that could be, I wanted to create a, something, a real extraordinary meeting place for our culture in a play. And I wanted to bring music in and dance, so I knew there was going to be music. And I talk, we talked about underscoring, we talked about setting choral pieces. We t you know, I could imagine several years, and I said, and maybe there'll be songs. Mm -hmm. And we began, you know, um, there's these, there are these daughters of um, the ether. They're, in the play, they're like these beautiful winged girls who come in, and early on, after the song, you know, I, 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 they have choral. Actually, Greek tragedy was sung. It's not a metrical system; it's a pitch system. Okay. The entire Greek tragedies were sung. We have no record of those, but we know that fact. And um, these choruses, the girls are the chorus, so it made perfect sense to take their the beautiful choral sections from Aeschylus and to adapt them lyrically myself and to give them to Serge and we began writing these pieces that were so beautiful that Serge set and I tried taking sections of the dialogue to set almost sort of oratorio like and Serge set one and it was what he did was really beautiful I thought I don't really like this I'm not that what he did it's just it, it, it the place started to feel removed for me right. in a way that I love opera but I wanted to bring in our culture in a bigger way. I wanted the play to have a bigger resonance into the society at large. And something about that song we did captivated my attention. And we began to, I began to think about how could we have a situation where we're performing an ancient Greek play and we have this modern music. Not only that the music's modern, but the lyri lyrically it was modern. Yeah. And the sentiment was actually rooted in something that could be profoundly felt by a character in the play. But how would she be giving voice to that? And so that, that beginning of that thought, which then went on many permutations for um, a few years of conversations among the three of us, you know, Diane included, ended up with the conceit we now have for our entire show, which is that this contemporary troupe of activists comes in to perform a play for you. And they come in and they sing you know, an opening number, they set up the story of the Titan Prometheus, and then they, before you, begin to stage this ancient play in order to incite the audience to a greater political awareness and a kind of activism. So then it makes sense that they could be singing contemporary songs because some part of their troupe, presumably, has been writing these songs and setting this little ancient play that they're going to present for you tonight with a kind of agenda of how they're going to wake you up with it. It's rather self-reflective in a way. Yeah. <laughs> Gods have got their hallways, they talk behind closed doors, they sit in conference. 
pirates always, pooling their resources. You want to play the martyr and curse the earth and sea. They offered you a bargain. Besides